This is the Steve and I. We're back with another Batman 66 episode review. So let's get into it. The episode Ma Parker. Sadly, the last time we will see this greatest mother of them all. We last left our episode off with Batman and Robin rounding up Ma Parker and her family and sending them to Gotham State Penitentiary, where we find out that the prison has actually been taken over by Ma Parker. And she has put dynamite in the Batmobile, and once the Badamina hit 60, the Batmobile will explode. We then do the usual opening credits, and then we pick up to where they left off. Whilst Batman is driving, Robin is pressuring Batman to drive quick, to drive, to drive quicker. But Batman is trying to stay under the speed limit. But something that the prisoner said about Warden Crichton doing a, doing well, essentially speeding on the road worries him as the warden would never speed he then pulls over and finds the dynamite in the batmobile and throws it up in the air causing it to explode we then come back to the prison where ma parker and a gang believe that they have essentially killed off batman and robin and tend to turn the prison into not just their hideout but every prisoner there to be a new member of her gang we then cut back to Batman and Robin, who wonder about the thing, about the exploding incident, and head back to the prison to check with Warden Crichton about everything. As soon as they get there, they find Warden Crichton there, along with his two guards, looking at him. Batman asks to see Ma Parker, and then he t is taken to their cell block, where it turns out Ma Parker, Legs, and her three sons are all there. I like the scene as it's look, it's poking fun at. Well, essentially, prison uh, prisons uh, being a little bit laxed around these well inmates, and having them essentially have like personal furniture and that in the in their cells. Batman says everything's right and runs off. Warden Crichton's then taken away by his guards, and then Ma Parker and her sons are now left out of their cages. Well, cells, I should say. Even though she has to explain to a guard that the doors don't open like that. They open by an electronic switch. As soon as they get out, Ma Parker has pretty much a kind of press conference with every inmate in the inmate in the prison and tells that with her running this place, they can turn Gotham into their own personal playground. They could rob whatever they want and they'll never get caught because this will be the last place they look. So essentially, Ma Parker has essentially started a criminal syndicate in the city. Batman, we cut back to Batman and Robin, back at, essentially, the Batcave, but Batman is wondering about the whole affair, as he was told Ma Parker would be one of the dangerous criminals he would yet to face, but he said it was too easy apprehending them. Just as that's happening, Ma Parker, the three sons, and another inmate, the trustee, named Trigger, Pull off a bank job, uh, pull off a bank robbery, and try to rob money from an armored truck. The, an explosion. They set off an explosion that somehow is caught by the back computer who sends the vibration near Gotham City National Bank. Batman and Robin then quickly get in the Batmobile and drive off. Ma Parker and her sons essentially robbing all the money, but as soon as the Batmobile turns up, they throw money in the air and make their escape. But just but just as Batman ends up tackling Trigger, ends up taking a bit of his clothing. He then takes it back to the Batcave and examines it, finding out it's ripped prison cloth. And he comes to the conclusion that one of the inmates has escaped. He then calls up Gordon Crichton. We then see a scene where Warden Crichton is essentially still held hostage in his office, along with Ma Park Parker and her boys counting up the money and distributing it to pretty much everyone in the building. When Batman calls up Warden Crichton, Warden Crichton is at first threatened by Ma Parker to not say anything. But Warden Crichton, not being that type of person, tells Batman that Ma Parker has taken over the prison. When Batman hears this, he and Robin quickly get in the Batmobile and drive, drive to the prison. As soon as they get there, they try to climb over the wall and go across the yard without getting caught. But are quickly apprehended and are taken to Ma Parker. With a very intense scene in the, well, Warren's office, they are then taken to a, essentially, electric chairs where they plan to be fried at midnight. Batman, with the help of his utility belt, sends Morse code back to Alfred to tell them to have the power be turned off at that time and pray that Alfred got the message in time, which he did. 
Now, at first, he had to try and do this, but f but first, Legs was watching him. But thanks to Legs' insecurities of, you know, of not being as tough as the boys and being not Mars' favourite, which has been pretty much been said and shown throughout these whole pair of episodes, Batman uses this to get her to walk away. And of course, like I said, the Morse code thing, Mark Park and the boys later come back in and plan to fry, uh, fry Batman. But as soon as she pulls the switch, the lights go out. They're wondering what the hell's going on, and it's revealed that Batman and Robin are out of their thing and are wearing special goggles. A bat fight breaks out, with Mark Parker's goons getting essentially all knocked out. And Mark Parker apprehended. It's also revealed when the power went out, all the inmates were locked in their cells. We then end the episode with revealing that, Mar pa that the prison is now back under Wong Crichton's control, and we assume all the guards that were on Mark Parker's payroll have also been apprehended and put in cells. No doubt they have the police department holding the prison until they can get some guards that ain't crooked. However, they do end with one little gag revealing that while Mar Parker's essentially the children were running the prison, they used it to order mail. Thinking it's dynamite, to find out that in the package is nothing but a flower a bag of roses. After all, today was Mother's Day. We end the episode there with Batman tackling the Clock King in the next week's episode. Nothing really changes much in terms of the cast. Batman and Robin are still the same as they were in the previous episode. I like, again, just like in the previous one, Warden Crichton is getting a bit more screen time and a more chance to really play a role in the story. He occasionally pops up throughout the episode. I absolutely love it for those reasons, and Alfred saving Batman at the last minute is pretty good, too, is pretty fun too. But of course, like I said, the main standout is Ma Parker. Shelley Winters plays this role with enough seriousness, a little bit over the top, and a bit of a goofy factor, but not too much to the point where it's on, where it's not to the point where it's eye rolling or cringeworthy. For me, Shelley Winters, for me, breathed life into this role. I also like the fact that, you know, she's always putting down her daughter for getting involved in crime when she herself is a criminal herself. The idea of running the prison and essentially using it to build up her own crime syndicate and have Batman and Robin essentially apprehend criminals to form new members of a gang, that all pretty fun too. For me, f now, from what I've been managed to find, the reason Shelley Winters came didn't come back because she didn't have that much of an impact on the audience despite a phenomenal actress playing him. Adam West even said though Shelley Winters was absolutely a treasure to work with, she he felt that Ma Parker was a weak villain. In fact he felt for many villains that began season two were pretty weak, like the Archer, Minstrel, and sadly Ma Parker. However, I really like her for those for the fact that she's more of my type of character, being a gang like a more crime boss gangster. And like I said, the reason why now the reason why she was never in my top ten favorite villains, despite how much I like her, was because I felt that she did not uh, was because she only did two episodes and she really should have come back for more. I also found her to be one of the most interesting female villains on the show. Other than Catwoman, I always felt that the ones that came after weren't that all great or even fun. Uh, fun. Zelda is a completely different because she's really a one shot, but Mark Parker should have come back, at least for one more round. Like I've always said, when you introduce a villain, you should at least have him come back for at least a second round. For me, that just would have worked. The character dynamic with the family, essentially the sons being the henchmen and the daughter being the mole, I like how it's a little role reversal. All fun there. I also like how at the end they do the uh, children do buy their, mo their mother essentially a gift for Mother's Day. It's a, it's a little funny joke, a little bit of a gag, but I can enjoy it for those reasons. It's absolutely great. These characters' dynamics are perfect. And of course, we get not one, but two cameos. During that scene where she's essentially telling the, all the prisoners her plan, we get Catwoman in the audience. However, she does reveal that Joker and Penguin are locked up in solitary, because they probably don't want to follow Ma Parker's orders. I like how she gets this little scene and a little continuity to what she's doing. We also get, because we don't have the traditional window cameo, we do get a different type of cameo. The guard that is guarding the wall is, of course, comedian legend and TV le comedian legend and TV legend Milton Berle, who, of course, would later join the series to play a main villain in season three. But that is still a long way away. I like this little brief moment. Now, when I watch this, Dad say, "Hey, it's Uncle Milton." I'm like, "Who the fuck is Uncle Milton?" And I got explained a bit, 
and absolutely a lot and because of that a little bit I've become a big fan of this actor and comedian because of this little stint he was very popular at the time and of course was a known a bit of a known ladies man and gambler then again most comedians of the time were like that and even to this day kind of for me I like because we don't have the traditional window cameo we still managed to squeeze some cameos at least for the fun of it for me, Ma Parker is an excellent two-parter to this two-parter. Well, second part to this two-parter, I should say. I really wish Ma Parker could have come back for another round. Her interesting plan of essentially taking over Gotham State Prison to essentially start up a crime syndicate is really interesting. Though could poke flaws with it, well, how are they going to, well, run the, you know, how long do they plan to run the prison for? Or how do they plan to spend the money? True, you don't really think that far ahead. Well, and honestly thinking that, I question it, but I didn't, didn't find it to be that much of a problem for me. Again, I enjoyed it for what it was. Fun episode, and Shelley Winters, the screen legend, and honestly, an absolute blast of screen presence, was enjoyable to watch nonetheless. And there we have it, Ma Parker, the last, ep the last part in this two-parter, and sadly the last time that we will ever get to meet Ma Parker. I kind of find we're getting that a lot. All these villains were introduced to will sadly be the last time we'll see them. Very few ever returned. Anyway, join us next time as Batman will tackle that calculating criminal, the Clark King. So tune in next time for the same Stephen hour, the same Stephen time, the same Stephen channel. And ladies and gentlemen, so long for now.